Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing all of you how to make a title in a path or circle shape inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So if you want to be creating a custom title in Resolve, then you need to go up to the effects library, go down to effects, and then we're going to look for a fusion composition clip. So this is just a completely blank clip that's going to show nothing but black, and we can use that as the base for creating a custom title on top of. So I'm going to drag this into the timeline. By default, it's going to be five seconds in duration. So if you want to design your title to be a different duration, you can always pull on the borders to either shorten or lengthen the clip. But for right now, we'll just stick with the default five second template. So let's go ahead and take this by left clicking and going over to the Fusion page by clicking on the Fusion tab at the bottom. So when we get over here, we're only going to see one output node, which is media out. So we're either going to want to use the text plus node if we are sticking with a simple 2D title or very similar, but in 3D, obviously, we can use the text 3D node instead. Just note that when you use a text 3D, you do need to render out to 3D. So you need to put a 3D renderer in the node chain before you get to media out. So if we just want to stick with the basic 2D text plus title, we can just click on text plus over here. Then we can unselect media out and click on text plus, which is going to add this text plus node to the graph. And then we want to take the gray output node and connect that to media out. So this is going to be the only node we need to work with for basic setups like this video, because the path and circle options are actually available to us in the layout tab. So with this text one, I'm going to put it on the left view by clicking on the left view circle here. I'll control middle mouse wheel to zoom out a bit. And let's start typing some text we might want to use for our title. So I'm going to type in here, this text is along a path just to add enough words so that when we actually put it on the path, we'll be able to see its effect a little bit more clearly. So most of the other settings here, we don't really need to change. If you want to change the font, though, go ahead and size as well. But for right now, what we need to do is to go over to the layout tab. So here you're going to see type point as the default for your title, which means that all of the text is going to be positioned correlated with a point that is basically where this red box meets in the center here. So if I change the point of the text moves along with it. But note that with this point mode, the text just goes left to right and is centered on this text. So inside of this point mode, if I change the center X or center Y values, it's going to adjust the position of all of the text with reference to that anchor point. But if we take this drop down menu, the type and we go down to path, nothing's actually going to occur initially, but you'll see this new crosshair appear. So if we want to create the path now, we just need to simply left click and start adding points. So the first left click is going to add a dot to our screen and you'll notice two handles on either side. So these allow us to create curves with our path points. If I left click and I add another point, then you'll see that, that this path just linearly moves from the bottom left to the top right now, which can be one option if you want to keep all of your text flat like this. But if I hit control Z, and now I re-add the point, but this time I'm left clicking and holding, then we can pull up or down to control the handles for this path. So you can see how this warps the path and as a result, and also adjusts where the text is going to appear. So if we let go, we still have the option to move either of these handles individually. So I can pull on this left side handle down or around wherever I need it to go. So for every point we add to the path, we really have three things that we can adjust the left handle, the center point, which is the position of that main point, and then the right handle. So if I left click again, we add another handle. So we can continue adjusting the path by left clicking and adding another point. Now a note that as soon as we start adding these points, we also get a large toolbar at the top to adjust our paths. So if we look around, we should be able to find options for deleting points. So here we have delete points. So this delete points option removes the currently selected points. If I left click on any of these points, then you'll know it's selected because it'll be golden. So if I hit delete now, then that removes that middle point and simplifies our path again. So you may actually find that you get a better result if you only have a couple points. The less handles and points you have to work with, the simpler it's going to be. But if you want to go ahead and create something quite crazy, all right, control Z here, and then we can just keep adding points wherever we want everything to go. Obviously, we can see here it's a little bit wonky on that right side, so we might need to 
adjust some of these points a little bit further. So let's move the handles until it curves nicely. We can adjust these to add a little bit of a curve on the bottom handles as well. And that could be okay so far, but there's also another option on the bar to smooth it out. So if I hit Shift and A, I can select all of the points at once. Then we can go here to where it says Smooth or Shift S on the keyboard. If we click that, it's going to take our points and smooth out the curves for them. So that'll make it look a lot nicer without needing to spend too long on getting everything positioned where you want it to be. Now, one other thing you might notice is that the position on the path is actually set. So the text is appearing in the middle by default. So if you want the text to write from left to right on the path, starting at the very start of the path, then we can take this position on path and lower it down to zero. So I'll just type in zero there. Now that's a little bit off the screen, so we might need to adjust the path further. So our text is appearing a little bit off the screen there. One way to move all of the points at once could be to take the center X and center Y for this layout and adjust it so that everything's on screen again. So that might be okay. We could also shrink the text if we want, or we can have it start a little bit further along the path, something like here, rather than actually all the way at zero. Now, if you want to animate this so your text moves along the path, then you can keyframe it. So I'm going to keyframe at frame zero. So you can see frame zero on that little timeline there. And let's go to frame 30 now. So as long as you've created one keyframe manually by checking the keyframe diamond, if you set a new value at any other point in the timeline, a new keyframe is going to be created automatically. So now I can click on these left and right arrows to go between keyframe points. And if I want, I can go to frame zero, hit play and we'll have a little animation where our text moves along the path. Okay, so the other layout mode I wanted to mention in this video is layout circle. So obviously you could create a circle with path mode, but because you have to manually create all the points and adjust the handles, it can get kind of messy. So a much simpler way, if you just want it to be in a perfect circle, is to click on the drop down menu and go to circle option. So we can see that the circle is going to be positioned around the center point. If I want it to be in the middle of the screen, then we should take the center X and put that back at 0.5 and center Y at 0.5. So now our text is rotating around the center of the screen, which is probably what you want in many cases. If we want to take this text and pull it closer to the center, we can lower the width down, uh, referring to the width of the circle or the radius here. Just note that if you pull it in too far, then your text may overlap each other. So you probably want to keep it something more reasonable like this. So if you find that the circle is too big for your purposes, you can try lowering the size as one option. So note that with size, it shrinks the text rather than adjusting its position to pull it in closer to the circle itself. But if we decrease the width, then the text is going to start to curve around the circle more and more rather than the text itself shrinking. So if we pull the width in too far, then the text isn't going to have enough space to write on this tiny circle. So it will start overlapping each other. So you've got to be careful about that. And if you just want to make sure that it maintains the position, then you would just adjust the size instead. You can also try changing the option on fit characters. So we can see by default, it says adjust spacing to fit, but we can change it to adjust horizontal space to fit or adjust size to fit. And you can see if that gives you a better result on your current circle than the defaults. So here we have adjust spacing to fit, and we can change it to adjust horizontal size to fit and adjust size to fit. So you can basically decide for yourself what looks best to you. In this case, adjust spacing to fit makes the characters look too spaced out to me. So I might prefer adjust size to fit for a small circle like this. Another option you have for controlling the spacing of the words, if we go over to the transform page, uh, by default, it's going to be in characters mode here. So you can actually adjust the characters individually, increasing the distance or decreasing the distance between the characters. Uh, but it may be more useful to try transform words. So if we increase the spacing here, it only adjusts the spacing between these words. So you can just kind of play around with that and figure out what looks best for your circle. Personally, I probably would not shrink the circle to be too small and uh, let it appear bigger on the screen, especially if you want it to be a big title. So we could go back to size one, maybe something like there for the width. If we want, we can change the font. And then let's just copy and paste this text a few times. But one fun animation we could use with a shape like this might be a right on right off effect. So I'm going to go to frame zero and I'm going to take the right on end and pull this all the way to zero. I'm going to keyframe it. Now we can go to frame 30. 
and I'm going to take the right on and put it all the way back to 1.0. And by the way, this is on the text tab of the text node. So now across this duration, we have a little animation where the text appears on the screen. And if we wanted, we could just add some extra graphics to this little fusion setup. So I'm going to right click, go to add tool. Let's do composite and merge. Going to make this text one the background there as we feed into media out with these connections. So now let's just go ahead and take this DaVinci Resolve logo, pop it in here to the node graph, connect it to the foreground or the green connector on the merge node. Then we have our logo there. To adjust the size of this node, make the logo a little bigger, I'll select the media in one, I'll right click on the line, go to add tool, transform, resize. I'll go ahead and check keep frame aspect so that the logo keeps to the same uh, ratio between its height and width. And let's just go ahead and shrink this down until it fits inside of our circle nicely. Okay, so now if we go back over to the edit page, we can take a look at this little graphic we've made. So if we want to add a background to this little graphic, I can pull that in as well. So just drag and drop once again. Let's add another merge node in here so that we can combine everything. So add tool, composite, merge. So we want this background to be the background. So that's the yellow connector on the merge node. And then everything else, the original merge one is going to feed into the foreground. So it sits on top. We connect this to media out. So I just need to resize the background. So I'm going to left click on media in, right click on the line in front of it, go to add tool. Let's do transform resize. Okay, it's already got the defaults for our project. So it's going to basically take the original resolution and spit it out to 1920 by 1080 pixels. So if we go over to the edit page now, we can see our full fusion composition here. Go to frame zero, hit play. And we have a fun little animation of the text moving along the circle. But you could also do the same thing with the path as I showed you earlier on in the video. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video, creating titles using path and circle layouts in DaVinci Resolve 17. I hope all of you learned something from the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in my future video content.